Welcome back. So today I want to go over my little experiment I did in making some Dorodongo spheres. Uh, Dorodongo is basically taking like dirt, shaping it into a sphere, and then polishing it to a shine. Um, this one I actually had to, I tried spraying it with a clear coat finish because it's kind of textured, so it's kind of hard to get that polish on there. Got a couple, these were actually the dirt being polished itself. This is not a spray. Um, this one is actually a different color because I put a little bit of a pigment powder on while I was polishing it. And same as this one, this is a, the green pigment. Um, this one is sprayed. I kept getting these dark, or not dark, but uh, rough patches along with um, like that. These have straw mixed in because some of the videos I watched they talked about using that but I'm gonna make another one without that and hopefully I can get a good finish on it. Um, this was probably the best one I had. It's still got a few of the dents like low spots and it didn't quite polish out all the way and with that straw it's still got some of that kind of poking through so really deters from the look. So I'm hoping I can make one that's nice and perfectly smooth, try to get it perfectly spherical, and I'm going to share some of the things I picked up along the way that in most of the videos I watch there's kind of like variations of how to do different things, and I just want to kind of go over what I learned through the process. I'm no expert, but it's always good to have extra knowledge out there, so hopefully I can share something that helps you in your journey for making a Dorodongo. So let's get to the uh, mixing process, I guess you'll call it. So let's go. Actually, one thing um, you don't necessarily need uh, any specialized tools for this, but I would recommend um, I picked this up. It's just an old style, like sifter for flour, but it really works good because it's got a fine mesh, so you get your uh, dirt sifted out and get the fine particles because you need to have a good dry fine powder uh, in the polishing process towards the end and also just having to get some of the rocks and other kind of debris out of the dirt when you're initially making the ball so that's the one thing you might want to get and then if you have some like jars or bottles laying around from like your recycling like this is a baby food jar um, and also you can use like PVC plumbing pipe parts and that's gonna give you the help give you that shaping uh, perfectly spherical shape so but we'll go over all that those are the only two things that you kind of really need for this but other than that just a shovel and digging up some dirt so with that said, let's get to it. Picked up these uh, sifting, well, sifting pan, and it comes with like five different screens. I'm just using the smallest one I got right now. I'm just sifting it, trying to get all the big stuff out. I'm getting some little pieces falling through that are kind of like stems of roots and stuff. So. Might have to do it a second time or see if I can find some maybe uh, like a window screen type screen to refine it a little bit more. But I really don't know how fine I need to do it. I just don't want a bunch of garbage in there. So I'm going to go ahead and sift all this stuff for each one. Well, maybe not the clay, but I'm going to try to pick all the big stuff out and hopefully uh, not have any big rocks or anything in there. This is some of the clay type soil that I uh, found in the yard. I'm going to put it on my thing. And one of these solo cups is pretty close to like two actual measuring cups. So basically, I'm going to have two cups of the clay soil, and then I'm going to add about two cups of sandy soil. Like so. And now we need some agua. 
so the consistency we're looking for is like dry, very dry cake batter is what they described it on some of the videos. So if you want it to hold itself together but you don't want it to be just like completely dripping wet. I should have smashed these up a little better. When I initially had these for the first ones, the uh, the soil was a lot more wet, and so was the clay. Look, everything was a lot more damp. So this is going to be a little bit more water required for this one. Kind of want to try and compact it as much as you can. Obviously, it's squishy, but so it's trying to make sure there's no huge air pockets or voids into this ball. Try to shape it as much as you can to the initial sphere, because the closer you can get it into the right shape now will help uh, or will lessen the amount of shaping you have to do later. I think that's what we're going to get for the first stage. If you start getting cracks or anything like that, don't worry too much about it. Just try to like fill them up as best as you can. And then when you put it in the plastic bag, that kind of helps. It sort of like self-heals itself. I don't know how it does it, but Maybe the, the moisture just kind of evens out, but um, when you put it into the plastic bag, you want to set it in something that's kind of like holding holding the shape, because initially when I first did the little one, I didn't think about it, but when it sits there and you're on a hard surface, what happens? You get a flat spot. So you want to kind of set it in something that's sort of going to cradle it um, so like put your plastic bag like if you've got an old uh, t-shirt or a towel or something and just kind of basically make like a bird's nest shape and just set it in there it's not gonna be perfect but you don't want it to just be flat because you set it like that and then the next day you come and this is gonna be squished so all right, it's about, I don't know, half a day later, maybe not even that long, sitting in the bag. I'm going to take it to the bench, and then we're going to start shaping it a little bit and then adding some more dirt. So you can see we got a lot of moisture on there. Some of the videos, they show at this stage, start to put your dirt on it, but I kind of want to try to shape it more while it's still a little damp, but you got to be careful. If it's too squishy, you're just going to end up, like, ripping it apart but hopefully I can shape it enough get it more spherical and that way when I start adding the the powdery dirt that creates like the outer shell it'll be nice and uh, spherical so hopefully we can shape that up a little bit here one little tip too like if you're using like I'm gonna use this jar to start with you gotta make sure that kind of periodically as you're going along you want to have this nice and clean because if it starts to get built up on there and gets dried out and hard, it actually kind of cuts into it and makes it, digs into it. So I got like a towel just sitting on the floor here that I kind of just stick down and give it a little clean off once in a while to help get the buildup off. I just kind of want to go around in a circular pattern. And I actually noticed that the, this cuts into it a little bit more than like using the plastic um, PVC so you just kind of have to experiment with the different jars and other we got some kind of string in there. No, it's actually a <laughs> it's actually a piece of like plant a small small sprout Kind of give it a turn you can kind of see where the high spots are like right here let's go over a little bit and i think some of it will actually come out when you're polishing it you can shape it a little bit but this stage is going to be the best bet as far as from what i can tell 
but you gotta be careful if like it's still a little squishy, so you're not. Let's try this guy. It's just more smooth going across the surface. Yeah. You see, get that build up. I'm gonna wipe that off. So this is my, this is the finely sifted dirt, but you just kind of want to give it a little sprinkle and just kind of let the heavy stuff fall off and just rub it in. And they say this is supposed to help kind of build up a shell around the outer layer. Go around, try to get the whole thing, and if it starts to get to the point where the sphere starts to like crack open a little bit, just stick it back into your plastic bag, and then come back a little bit later and repeat this process. And eventually, we're gonna get to the point where we almost just wanna use like, the f just to dip your hand in there and just kinda touch it so it just makes a fine powder and that's what helps the final polish. But I could never really get that perfect, perfect sphere. So hopefully this one turns out. And when you put it into the plastic bag, what it's doing is actually drawing the moisture from the center outwards. And that's why you get it built up uh, moisture on the surface. So trying to dry it out from the inside out basically from what I understand I don't know if that's actually true or not but I'm only going by what I have learned on the internet and we all know that that's never wrong so yeah see it's starting to get a little bit of a crack there so now I'm gonna call that good I'm gonna put it back in our bag I'm gonna stick it back in its little nest for I don't know, half an hour, come back and see what it looks like, and repeat adding some more layers. Ooh. She's a little, a little cracky already. I'm gonna have to hold off for a little bit longer. Yeah, see, she's getting all a little split open. No! It's been. Oh, I don't know, about another 12 hours. You can see we get a lot of moisture built up on the surface now. Go ahead and keep adding on our powdery dirt. I think part of this stage is where I goofed up on the other ones that I made where I didn't, I was waiting for it to dry and dry and dry and dry and dry and then eventually I started doing adding dirt like this but I really wasn't sure what I was doing so I just kind of like kind of accidentally did okay but I think the process right now of adding this dirt is like you're supposed to be building up layers and I just basically waited for it to be dry enough where I could polish it instead of adding to the outside layer so I'm hoping that that is the case and eventually we can get a good polished finish on it I think I'm about ready to go because we're starting to get a little bit of a crack at it again so let me do a little bit more on this side <clears throat> and I remember when I was doing this before I was putting it in the bag and then taking it out and doing this a little bit and kept putting it in, leaving it there and it never really dried out. So and then I started to just leave it outside of the bag. But when it starts to crack, you kind of want to get some of that moisture back to the surface so it kind of seals back up. So I'm gonna, yeah, we're getting a good crack there. Uh, go ahead, put it in the bag and then uh, 
see where we end up in about another day maybe here because it's still pretty cold here and I'm hoping to uh, not rush this. I want to do this. I want to get a good finish on this one. I lost track of how many days it's been since I worked on this because uh, I've been trying to sell a car and been busy. So my little guy's just uh, been sitting in his plastic bag the whole time. So we're going to go ahead and keep adding more dirt. It's starting to feel more uh, solid. So we're getting probably closer to the finishing stage here. But it's all the same, just gotta keep adding more dirt. I wanna try to get that powdery stuff, but that's why you kinda just sprinkle it on and let some of the heavier stuff fall, cause you don't really want that in there. You just want the, the, the finest of the fine dirt. Nothing but the finest dirt for our Duradango. Dordango. I apologize, my head is all stuffed up, so. Whatever I say probably doesn't sound right, anyways. Got a little bit of an oblong shape to it, but at this point, uh, I'm really not going to do much about it. I got a little bit better. Um, I wet it down on the other ones and then shaped it more, but I think when I did that, I might have like basically took the top layer off and that was why I couldn't get a good polish. Part of me wants to try and starts to start to polish this. It's like I don't know what is or isn't the right stage for that. It's like, yeah, it's still pretty. You can get it to get smooth, so maybe I should try doing that. So maybe I'll do this a little bit, and then uh, if I think it's working, I'll continue on. And then I will uh, not. I'll just keep adding dirt. So I'll switch to this for a second. Look at that! See the difference? So much nicer. We might do it, guys! This is gonna turn out. Even if I can't get it to be perfectly shiny, if I can make it so that it's smooth without any of those craters. Yeah, see. This is obviously shiny, and I did that when it was mostly dry, but I couldn't get rid of these low spots and I didn't have it I didn't shape this one at the right time I let it dry too much I think so at this stage I think I'm I'm ahead of the game right now so I think I'm gonna let it set in its little nest thing over here I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not necessarily gonna put it in the bag I might just let it set out some more and dry but I think I think we're on the way man yes Okay guys, well I think we are, need to pause my movie, um, pretty much done. I went back over off camera and added another layer of fine dirt and then did the re-smoothing thing with the jar, but I don't know if I kind of goofed up with that last layer. As you can see it's got like these faint, like cracking along the surface and I don't know if that's like the outer layer of that last bit of dirt kind of trying to like flake off it feels p perfectly smooth but it just looks like old dried out weathered leather it's kind of cool looking and I don't think it's really going to do anything else I don't think it's going to like uh, flake off I could be wrong but overall I did manage to get a nice smooth surface without the uh divots and like craters like this guy and part of that is like right there or like right there all the other spheres that I made like right yeah that whole area all the other spheres I made I used the dry straw and that really kind of 
goofs up the finish like all of them you can kind of see some of that straw poking out I mean it's like not rough feeling but you can just see it it just kind of has like that little bit poking through a spot there it just kind of like deters the whole look in my opinion although these even they're not perfect have a little bit more character in my opinion as far as you know this looks more like a, a moon or the moon or like a planet you know something like that this just looks like a leather ball <laughs> so I guess it's like the imperfections makes it makes it more interesting but at the same time it's like I would just like it to be nice and shiny this one did turn out the best as far as managing to scrape it down to a nice spherical shape and that texture kind of gives it like a alienish like what is it an alien egg Ooh, who knows but I think it's a pretty fun process I think I'm gonna like hang my Dora Dongo hat up for a little while before I decide to get back into it but you can only have so much dust and dirt on everything before you kind of get fed up with it but I did have the idea of trying to do one but like a dinosaur egg shape and because obviously a petrified uh, egg would have more of a kind of a rough look like that so maybe I could make one of those at some point yeah this turned out pretty good on pretty few use so I would say if you decide to try this you want to get like a, a little sifter this probably enough for sifting your dirt I did have the bigger ones like that are maybe like what the size of a bucket allows you to, to sift more at one time but overall I think that would work and that was relatively cheap whatever you really use I don't think makes any difference this one here and a few of the other ones were like 50 50 clay and sand or I say sand and clay but they were a sandy soil and a clay type soil they weren't necessarily all clay and all sand so I think as long as you're going through the process mostly the same I don't think the type of dirt really makes much difference as far as the end result but only way to find out is to try it yourself so I would definitely recommend it a couple things I would say is like if you're in a hot dry climate um, when you're doing once you get into the whole like going through the layers stage you want to make sure you put this in a plastic bag and then somewhere cool that will help um, from it drying out too fast so if you can't get to it um, you know if you wait a couple days or something come back to it it's still like workable um, but like where I'm at it's been fairly cool it's early spring but it's still on average maybe like 45 to 50 degrees throughout the day and I also have this in a plastic bag and it's in my basement which is even more cool maybe that's like not outside in the weather but that definitely slows the, the drying process down as well so take that into account as far as like your work time and then so once you form the first one, throw it in your bag, make sure you put it in something that kind of like cradles it and keeps it you know, in a spherical shape so you don't get a flat bottom. And then once you start going through the stages of adding dirt, once it starts to get those little cracks bigger, you know, not like this, but like the bigger cracks forming, just put it in your plastic bag, stick it in your little nest thing to keep it nice and uh, round and then just kind of come back to it some video like it, like I said it, it depends on the climate I think from what I experienced I had to wait almost a day in between like if it started to get cracked before I could add to it and then proceed on from there and just kind of repeat the process when you get to the point where you want to polish it it's almost like a from what I could tell on like this one 
it was almost to the point where it was like dry dry but it it will when I was going over it it still it was like sounded like I was rubbing glass it sounded like this so you kind of have to find your window for that too and um, even if you get past it I think you can kind of go back like if I were to add water to this just over the surface I could probably keep on adding some more layers and re-smooth it out a little bit more and then maybe get to the point where I could re-polish it it's all kind of a it's a guessing game but it's not a guessing game it's like you kind of know what is gonna happen but at the same time it kind of has a mind of its own so I'm not an expert in the, the field of Dorodongo but that's what I have experienced with all six of these that I made so you really just have to make one and, and like I what I did is I made like all five at the same time and kind of worked them in different manners and just kind of see what happens in different stages I don't think you can really do it wrong it's just a matter of how good you can do it right that makes sense <laughs> but at any rate uh, I'm gonna call this good for now I got some other projects in the works and hopefully uh, Hopefully I can get going on something else so I'm not covered in muddy, dusty dirt everywhere. So I'm kind of fed up with the dirt for now. So I might come back to it, but uh, like I said, it's kind of a fun experiment to just play around. The kids, I'm sure, would enjoy something like that. Give them a reason to get outside and literally get their hands dirty. So for now, guys, I think I'm going to call it good. Happy... Doro ding, Dora, happy Dora. Have a great day. <laughs> See you guys later.